Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about winter driving. Some of you may have already got your first taste of winter and driving in it. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about winter driving, some of the skills, techniques, and tips that you can use and employ and take on board to keep you safe. And this is both for uh, passenger vehicles, cars, light trucks, and for CDL drivers, bus and truck drivers as well. This will help you out. Corey's here. Corey is the moderator, Bricks for Wheels. Uh, Margaret's here from New York. And Matthew's here from Quinnell, BC. Tim is here from Winnipeg. And the mad trucker says he loves the title. <laughs> the heck is this white crap on the road? Yes, Pathfinder, hello, my friend. And yes, Mad Trucker, you ended up with your second driving lesson, driving in ice and snow and handled like a pro. Awesome. And uh, <laughs> just to tell you a funny story about that. Uh, five or six years ago when I was working here at the truck driving school in Vernon, we had a dump of snow. We had 36 inches of snow in 24 hour period and ended up at the truck driving school. And where we pulled into the parking lot you had to pull through the parking lot in front of the building and then across the road into an alley and then back straight up well <laughs> there was a bit of an incline and you know there's good 12 inches 20 centimeters of snow on the ground and I said to the student that I was with I said listen you need to throw a chain on the back of that truck because big trucks are just they're not designed for going through big sn for snow even though they're big trucks and whatnot and so the student kind of grumbled about it, got out, put a chain on. We pulled out, backed in. Not an issue. The other driving instructor, who I never had any respect for anyway, comes over, gets over in the laneway, the alleyway in the back of the, the or on, on the other side of the road. He's got the trailer across the road, and he gets it stuck. And, you know, rather than going and finding somebody and saying, hey, I need a little tug to get me pulled out of here and whatnot, no, he sits there and starts gearing up into fifth gear and he's just like tearing the rear ends apart on that poor old truck and just spinning the crap out of it until he finally, you know, after about 10 minutes of this looking like a complete and utter newbie and unprofessional driver finally got it unstuck. So there's some stories about getting stuck in the wintertime. And the other thing that I will tell you about getting stuck in the winter time, if you do happen to get stuck, and this is from my friend Dave, who's a tow truck driver, stop, just stop, <laughs> because you will bury it deeper and it'll cost you more money to get it out in the long run. So if you do get stuck in the snow, just stop, call the tow truck, call the wrecker, call a tractor, whatever you need to get yourself pulled out and you know carry on with your life. It, it happens to the best of us, okay? So Kristen's here from New Brunswick. Catherine's here. Uh, Krista, happy to see you as well. And Ben's here, my friend Cole. I passed my driver's test last week. That's awesome. Katie's here. And uh, it sucks in Minnesota. <laughs> well, yeah, you do live in Minnesota. So, you know, they do have a fair bit of weather there in Minnesota. So the way this happens is, uh, for those of you maybe new to Smart Drive Test, I do a bit of a presentation here, 12 or 15 minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll spend the remainder of the hour answering any questions you have about passing a driver's test, driving in the wintertime, starting your career as a truck or bus driver, and we will help you out. Yes, time to celebrate for sure. Absolutely. I must got to celebrate those little successes. So I'll get down here to the slideshow presentation and here we go. Okay, bad weather, getting stuck in the daggum snow. Yes, indeedy. All right, so for those of you who may be new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I do have a PhD in legal history, which is study of policing, courts, and prisons. And uh, my expertise is in policing as it relates to prisons. I became a licensed driving instructor in 1997. I'm an instructor in Ontario, BC, and Australia, qualified for those three different places. Uh, I already talked about my doctorate. While I was doing my doctorate, I drove buses for Greyhound there. And so I have bus experience as well. And if you want to learn more, you can go over to the front page of the Smart Drive Test website, smartdrivetest.com and have a look at my full biography, my full autobiography, because I wrote it, so <laughs> it's over there. Uh, new video this week talking about truck drivers and weighing your unit, both axle weights and overweights. 
No snow in Hawaii, Pathfinder says. No, there isn't any snow in Hawaii. That's why people like to go there in the winter time. So, uh, yes, weights and measures. How to weigh your truck uh, once you become a CDL driver. Talked about this week. The first thing you need to do is you need to prep your vehicle. And Corey will go over and find the video for you on winter preparation of your vehicle. Winter washer fluid. Make sure that you put in winter washer fluid. I didn't really give this a whole lot of thought until someone said to me that they forgot to put in winter washer fluid in their vehicle. Uh, the washer fluid that was in there froze. And of course, as we know, uh, ice expands and it broke the uh, washer fluid jug inside the vehicle and it was a fairly expensive repair. So make sure that you put in winter washer fluid in your vehicle. Okay, if you need to and the winter washer fluid's not working because you know there's all kinds of crap and whatnot on the roadways and I've experienced this, then you need to go into the fuel station and use the cleaning material there, the water and the brush and those types of things, okay? Stay away from sand trucks and I'll tell you that right now that this has already started on our roadways. I have two stone chips in my vehicle uh, because if you get stone chips, you're gonna get stone chips for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> Here in British Columbia, we call it pickle mix, which is sand and salt. Uh, there seems to be rocks in there that are probably about the size of your fist coming out of the back of the sand truck. So make sure you stay away from the sand truck. Uh, the salt shaker, as it's uh, affectionately known in the trucking industry. So stay away from that because it will cause stone chips. If you do get a stone chip on your truck or your car, get in and get it fixed right away because it only costs you 60 or 70 dollars to get your windshield fixed but if you have to repair the entire windshield it's going to cost you five or six hundred dollars i mean unless of course you have collision insurance and then you can get it repaired under your insurance for whatever your deductible is all right tires you want tires with good siping which means that you want tires with good tread many places here in british columbia and quebec states in the u.s minnesota and in other places you must have all weather tires. You must have tires that have either the M&S symbol on here, as you can see here, or they must have the snowflake symbol, the mountain with the snowflake symbol on them. If you do not have those on your vehicle in the wintertime and you are on particular roads, particularly here in British Columbia, the Coquihalla, or you're in Quebec, you could potentially get a fine if the police find out. Uh, in some places uh, here, particularly in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains, uh, Washington State, Idaho, Montana, here in British Columbia, you might want to even consider putting steel studded tires on your vehicle, particularly if you're driving on what's called hard pack, which is the top of the snow is just, it's a layer, probably six inches of hard pack on the top of the pavement, and you're just gonna be on driving on ice and snow. Make sure that your winter tires are properly inflated and don't drive your vehicle and then check the inflation pressure because it's gonna be a lot different than when it's cold at minus five or five degrees Fahrenheit or whatever it might be. So make sure you check your tires cold so that they run properly. All right, stopping on ice, get off the brake and off the throttle. And <laughs> that's gonna sound a little counterintuitive because the first thing that you want to do in the winter time to make sure that you stop where you want to stop is to get on the brakes, slow the vehicle back from where you actually wanna stop and then creep up to where you wanna stop. And for new CDL drivers, this is the same thing with a big truck. You want to slow down back from where you actually want to stop and then you want to creep up to where you actually want to stop. Okay? And if you start to skid or start to lose control on snow and ice, then get off the throttle, get off the brake, and focus on steering the vehicle. Sometimes you want to get out of the main tracks and out into the shoulder of the road. That way you could get yourself a little bit of traction. All right? Loss of control happens because of overuse of the primary controls, the steering, the brake, and the throttle. All of these overuse on slippery conditions could potentially cause you to lose control. Same thing if uh, there's a lot of rain on the road and your vehicle begins to hydroplane, you have to get your foot off the throttle, focus on your steering, and not a lot of steering, very deft steering uh, to keep control of the vehicle. Same thing as if you lose control or it goes into starts to go into a skid. Get off the brake and focus on the steering. Oversteering. <laughs> this is the one that scares the heck out of the passenger because the back end starts to come around and you're going into a corner and usually you have the brakes applied and the front end dips down, the back end comes up, the back end becomes lighter and you lose traction. Uh, and 
for front wheel drive vehicles or all wheel drive vehicles, sometimes, not always, acceleration might be an option that will help you to come out of that skid. So oversteering is when the back end comes around. You got your foot on the brakes, the back end starts to come around. Simply release the throttle, release the brake and focus on your steering. Understeering, this is the one that scares the crap out of the driver because you, you turn the steering wheel and the vehicle continues to go straight. <laughs> and usually this is because uh, you have your foot on the brake again or you have the steering wheel turned too sharp. So release the steering wheel, bring it back to straight. And if you don't know when your vehicle is straight, put a piece of tape on the top of the steering wheel and that will tell you where your steering wheel is at a glance. All right, chop steering technique adopted from racing and it does work in slippery conditions in snow and ice and uh, in rain as well when you start to lose a little bit of control with the steering and you just simply bring the steering wheel down a little bit at a time and then release it bring it back to straight allow the wheels to gain traction and if you're in snow and ice this will help you to maintain and regain control of the vehicle as well when you're using chop steering make sure that you're looking in the direction that you want to go Skid control, drive for the conditions of the roadway. We all know that during first snows or a lot of snow or it's extremely cold, people are driving far too fast. And remember, all wheel drive vehicles and four wheel drive vehicles are not going to get you stopped faster. They're not going to help you to maintain control. Yes, traction control and all of those things are nice and good and whatnot, but they're not gonna keep you out of the ditch if you're driving too fast. As one smart driver said a while back, you could be driving 100 miles an hour and snow tires are not going to save you. <laughs> so chop steering, get off the throttle, get off the brake. And sometimes you're going to have to get out of the ruts of where the most of the vehicles are going and get off into the shoulder of the road or some other place where you're going to get some traction. All right, skid recovery. Steer in the direction you want to go. Release the throttle, release the brake and look where you want to go. Don't give up. Make sure that you have your seatbelt on. Many people think that a seatbelt only protects you in the event of a crash, but the seatbelt keeps you in the seat because you can't drive the car if you're not sitting in the seat. <laughs> All right, so wear your seatbelt. And if a crash is imminent, try to slow your speed as much as possible before impact. All right, look in the direction you wanna go and steer like a mad person because you may have to really, really, really work that steering wheel. All right, don't give up. Many people get into a crash simply because they give up. They're just like, oh yeah, whatever. We're gonna crash now and we're all gonna die. Okay, don't do that, okay? And if you have a choice between aiming for something big like a, a tree or a rock, try to aim for something small. Try to aim for something that's going to collapse like a fence or a hedge or something like that. Trust me, trees do not, they have no give to them. They're gonna, you know, they're really gonna, you're gonna have a hard impact, so don't do that. All right, conclusion, tires. Make sure you have good snow quality snow tires or all weather tires on your vehicles. Uh, stay away from sand trucks, stay away from uh, snow plows. Do not pass snow plows on the right, all right? Deep snow, if you're driving in deep snow, know that it's gonna push you around and the car is gonna be dancing, so be careful with that. And skid control, if you lose control of your vehicle, uh, you know, off the throttle, off the brake, steer the vehicle in the direction that you want to go. All right, Benum, he's the mascot for the, uh, win the Quebec Winter Carnival. Benum literally means snowman in French. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, adjust to the speeds, uh, conditions of the roadway. Good tires, skid control, and crashing. If you do have to crash, try and hit something uh, small. All right, so transitioning back here. Here we go. Lots of conversation going on here. Uh, Jenniton, no, you're not late. You're right on time. Uh, ben, you should not go 10 miles an hour under the posted speed limit. Go for the conditions of the road. Uh, Margaret, does it affect your license if you skid on snow and crash the car? Uh, it doesn't affect your, uh, your license, Margaret, but it may affect your insurance, especially if you put a claim through. Trust me, they're gonna get their money back. Uh, so it will affect your insurance. Okay. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. My friend Colin is here as well. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Just trying to get back here. Excellent. Corey got the videos up for you. Thanks for that. And as we said, there's no snow in Hawaii, which is nice. DC is here. I'd like to say thanks for your videos. I passed my test. 
Much appreciated. That's awesome. Uh, and Brad says, I'm back at it with the live stream. Yes, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, everybody, everybody's doing all right with the uh, crazy uh, daylight savings time. Yes, which is kind of goofy. It feels a lot later than it actually is here. Okay, uh, my friend Tim here, if the conditions are really bad, please stay home. Yes, and I agree with Tim. If you're not comfortable driving in deep snow, you're not comfortable driving in adverse weather conditions, yes, please stay home. Please postpone your travel plans because it's just not worth it. It's just, you know, you get into a crash, you end up in the ditch, you have to get your car towed out. It's cold. Uh, you know, you may or may not have a winter survival kit in your vehicle. Uh, you know, if you are going to be traveling into rural areas, we encourage you counsel you to get a winter survival kit in your vehicle the other thing that I would say I, I strongly encourage you to put in your winter survival kit make sure that in your vehicle you have a charging cord for your phone to make sure that your phone is charged in the event that something does happen because it's difficult to call for uh, you know emergency services if your phone's not charged so make sure that you have that uh, you know all the other things in there have a a pail of some sort, a candle that you can melt snow for water because you can't eat snow because it takes energy out of your body and will deplete you. So you want to have some sort of way that you can melt snow and those types of things. Or you have some bottled water. You can't leave bottled water in your car because it'll just freeze and that, that defeats the purpose. Alec, uh, thanks for the positive messages about me failing my test. It's really hard to find another test with the COVID thing. Uh, do you have any tips to get one sooner? Uh, ATEC, uh, sorry, I... ATEC, uh, what I suggest, maybe go with a driving school because driving schools have blocks of time. Uh, so you might get a test faster than that. But the other thing is just keep calling, get your name in, get on the waiting list because people postpone and uh, defer their tests all of the time. So try that as well. Um, <laughs> Rob says he'd eat a ground squirrel in a pinch. I don't know. It'd be pretty cold and you'd have to eat it raw. Yeah. And Tim says, keep your t fuel tank full. Yes, minimum quarter tank fuel in the winter time when you're driving around, especially if you're driving outside of the city uh, because you're gonna get into trouble. And uh, the other thing you might wanna do is if you're in places like Minnesota, you're out on the prairies and you have sub-zero temperatures where it's minus 20, minus 30, you'll also want to put some antifreeze in your fuel tank to prevent the moisture in there because there is always a certain amount of water in your fuel tank from freezing. And of course, those of you who live in those climates in Minnesota and Idaho and those places where you get sub-zero temperatures for weeks and weeks on a time, you're also gonna have a block heater on your car and you're gonna be plugging your vehicle in in the winter time as well. Uh, so that, you know, it just runs better, okay? Uh, excellent, Sebastian. You passed your driver's test. That's really awesome. How has the first five days of driving been going with your license and your newfound freedom? That's awesome. Excellent. Uh, Mark. Hi, Rick. Got a road test tomorrow. Binge watching your videos and hoping I don't mess up. Mark, you're going to do awesome. Do you remember to breathe. <laughs> that will cause your body to relax so make sure that you're doing that and good luck on your test tomorrow uh michael is it okay to take your road test in the winter time yes it is michael and i would strongly encourage you to take your driver's test in the winter time because it is easier it's less exact yes you have winter to deal with and the road conditions aren't that great but if the roads are snow covered, you don't have to be 8 to 12 inches from the curb with the parking. You just have to get in behind the car in front of you uh, close to the snow bank. Because if you get the vehicle stuck, driving examiners don't, <laughs> don't like to push cars. So you just have to get in behind the vehicle in front of you. Corey will put the video up for you on taking your driver's test in the winter time. And I'm going to do a whole live stream next week about taking your driver's test in the winter time. So tune in next week for that and we'll help you with that. But definitely, yes, take your driver's test in the winter time. Okay, uh, Colin, hey Rick, I have a, heard that police can't ticket you in a parking lot. If, if that is the case, if I have permission from the lot owner, could I get a ticket for drifting in the snow? I'm from Ontario. Uh, <clears throat> uh, most of the time, Colin, I don't, yeah, sure, go get permission from the driver, but, uh, <laughs> from 
parking lot. Yeah, you're usually you're not going to get into trouble if you're in a parking lot and there aren't other people around in the parking lot and that you're doing anything negligent or dangerous. I mean, Tim might have something to say about that, about, you know, <laughs> what you're doing and whatnot. But, uh, you know, usually you're going to be all right. Uh, uh, Corey says it was nice that the time change happened on the weekend. Yeah, kind of, sort of. My mom is flying in tonight, so she's coming in at 10, which is really 11 o'clock. So by the time we get back here, it's going to be 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's going to be a bit crazy. Uh, Katie, I practiced driving last Friday and scared the person teaching me to drive. I am going too fast in the parking lot without something to guide me in the center of the parking lot. Okay, so Katie, basically you just need to raise your vision up and look farther down the parking lot and have something at the other end of the parking lot that you can aim for and you should be going less than 15 miles an hour in a parking lot sort of 10 to 15 miles an hour so you should be going slow okay uh is there a good car for winter <laughs> uh ben my 1998 honda crv is probably the best winter vehicle i have ever driven and actually the person that i bought my 98 honda crv from had a Jeep as well, and he said that with four winter tires on the CRV, it was a better, better winter vehicle than the Jeep. And uh, <laughs> and let me tell you, last weekend when I drove to Vancouver Island in the snow on the connector, and there was 12 inches of snow on the connector, uh, the buggy was just, it was gone. Okay, it is probably the best winter car right there. There you go. Can't say enough about it. Uh, Michael, I am planning to take my test in November. That's awesome. Excellent. Uh, you will keep believing. Is there a good car for winter? Okay, we talked about all that. Uh, Katie, how can I prevent driving over the curb? Okay, Katie, what you need to do is you need to get some of those three foot tall, uh, one meter tall pylons. Go down to the parking lot and practice driving along those with the passenger side of the vehicle because then you have something to see, you have something to judge off and you can learn where your vehicle is in space and place. Once you learn how to do that, and Corey will put the video up for you on beginner exercises that you can do in the parking lot, because the problem with the curb is, is the curb is this high and it's way over there on the passenger side. And unless you've practiced where your vehicle is in space and place with pylons on the passenger side of the vehicle, I mean, you're trying to judge 12 feet away. Unless you've practiced that with something that you can actually see, you're not gonna have success with the curb right off the beginning, so use those uh, taller pylons and then practice that in a parking lot and that'll really help you out to be able to park along a curb without sc scrubbing the tires uh, <laughs> Mark my Halloween was really low-key uh, because my kids weren't here and uh, I think we had one set of kids at the door <laughs> and I wasn't prepared I didn't have candy at the time so I had to go get some yes Okay, uh, Michael, Ferrari should be good in winter. Just kidding, I just got one here. <laughs> I just got here. <laughs> Michael, a Ferrari in the wintertime. Be good for doing some, uh, you know, some drifting in the parking lot and whatnot, but <laughs> no, not so much for driving through snow. Uh, okay. Uh, M. Kronk, this guy taught me how to drive manual like four years ago, and I love you, sir. We love you too, my friend. Thank you for coming back. How is the driving going? I'm sure it's awesome. Uh, ben, what about a Honda Pilot? Uh, I have no idea about a Honda Pilot, Ben. I've never driven one. Uh, Pathfinder, is heavier cars have an edge in driving in snow? Thanks, Rick. Uh, Pathfinder, they might have a thing in snow, but you got to remember that heavier, more inertia, if you start to lose control, you're going to lose control a lot more quickly than you would with a lighter car. Okay, uh, Katie, how much is it going to cost me to put winter tires? My wheels slip when there is no weather like snow or rain. How much is it going to cost for winter tires? Katie, uh, if you're not doing a lot of driving outside of the city, you could probably get away with all weather tires. Michelin has some really good all weather tires. Uh, the thing is, is that any set of tires for just about any vehicle are going to cost you between yeah, I don't know in the States, but you might be able to get a set of tires in the States, like a brand new set of tires in the States for $500, $700. Now, the other thing, the other option is, is then everybody keep this in mind, because I know that you're all, you know, well, not all of you, but most of you are younger and don't have a great deal of money. And $500,000 is, is, is a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. Uh, you could look for some secondhand snow tires as well, but keep but make sure that you look at the date on the tire. Just look, Google it, uh, have a look at the, the date on the tire and make sure that they're not older than, 
you know, six or seven years old because once they're eight years old, they're past their shelf life. Tires are only good for eight years. And Corey, I'll put the video up for you with Gary on tires. And he talks about that, that they begin, the rubber compound in the tire begins to break down after eight years. So once the tires are eight years old, you don't want them on your vehicle uh, any anymore. And Tim just said winter tires probably cost less than a crash would be. And yes, that is an excellent point of what Tim just said. Uh, and, you know, I'll just add to what Tim just said. It was the same thing a couple of years ago. You know, I drove down to Vancouver Island. I was coming back at, at night and I was exhausted. Uh, you know, it was 11 o'clock midnight, went into a hotel and, you know, it cost me 200 bucks. And I'm thinking 200 bucks for seven hours in a hotel room. I'm thinking, wow, that's a lot of money. But 200 bucks, I got a night's sleep. I got up in the morning and I went and drove home. And it's exactly what Tim said about winter tires. It costs less than a crash. Same thing with the $200 hotel room. Costs a lot less than, you know, crashing all of that that goes along with, with all of that goofiness. Trav, I passed my driving test. Congratulations on passing your driver's test. That's awesome. Where did you go to celebrate, my friend? Okay. Uh, channel, why do you have to be careful of Hyundai? Uh, I don't think you have to be careful of Hyundai, channel. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the other smart drivers here could kind of weigh in on Hyundai. Uh, I just... Not really sure. They're not high on my list. I probably wouldn't go to my way to look at a Hyundai, but I think they are a good economy car. They're beginning to come online. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm just leave it there with that because I don't, I, I'm speaking without information. It's just opinion on my part. Mcroc, good. I've got an RHD R32, so it's a bit of a learning curve with the left hand switch. Uh, learning though. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Uh, Colin, I drive a Hyundai Accent. You have to be really careful because of how light they are. Okay, so lighter cars, not so great in the winter time. Uh, Hondas are good little tanks in the winter time. Kirsten and Kirsten, I totally agree. My CRV is just something else. It's a bomb in the winter time. Uh, okay. Uh, Al Atec, uh, when turning right off a stop sign and there is something blocking your view of traffic, in my case, a fire truck, what should you do? Okay, so Atec. Uh, when you come out, you stop at the correct stopping position at the intersection. So at controlled intersections, you're going to stop before the stop line, before the sidewalk or crosswalk line. And if those two conditions don't exist, then you're going to stop at the edge of the road where the two, where the two roads meet. Okay, usually there's kind of a line there where, the ash, where they lay the asphalt on the road. Excuse me. So if you come up and you stop at the correct stopping position at the intersection, then you simply creep out, okay? And if there's a fire truck there that you can't see past, then you really have to creep out. And you just keep kind of creeping out, sticking your nose out, sticking your nose out until you can absolutely see. And then once you can see, then you proceed, okay? But go slow and proceed. Okay, uh, a pink. What's the market value of a 2013 Hyundai Accent Elantra with 95,000 kilometers? Uh, channel. What I suggest to you is go on on uh, Auto Trader, look up that model, and see what the other comparable prices are. They also give you a kind of a benchmark of, you know, whether it's above average price or below average or kind of at the mark of what it will be. So that's the place you can kind of do your research. Uh, Michael, do you have any ways of preparing for the road test? I have ADHD and I get nervous easily. Uh, Michael, so have a look at the reduce anxiety and fear video and there's some tips and techniques that you can employ there to reduce your, your, your anxiety around your driving test and that'll really help you out. Uh, channel, would you recommend me buying the vehicle you are currently driving? <laughs> Uh, the problem channel with the vehicle that I'm currently driving is you're probably not going to get one now that has less than 150,000 kilometers on it. Uh, I mean, they're an excellent vintage of vehicle, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, and they need some maintenance. But, uh, you know, I would do a lot of research. You could probably get a newer car uh, than what I'm driving because you got to realize I'm driving a 21-year-old vehicle. So <laughs> uh, it's, n it's not on my list forever, okay? Okay. Uh, Katie, gotcha. Yeah, I stay in the city when I drive. I don't drive. I don't know the area. Okay. 
So yeah, Katie, um, you know, if you're just, if you're driving in the city for the most part, then I would just recommend good all weather tires on your vehicle, you know, a set of Michelins or something or some other high quality tires for sure. Uh, Michael, uh, when it comes to trucking, is it more difficult with the Flobo trailers than the 18 wheelers? Uh, Flobo trailers. I'm not familiar with those kinds of trailers. Uh, Michael, what are you, what are you referring to when you're talking about those tires? I'd have to Google it. Uh, maybe what you could do is send me an email, Rick at Smart Drive Test, and I'll look it up and I'll talk to you about that. Because <laughs> I've probably driven it, I just don't know what the name is. Imkronk, yeah, if you got money to buy an extra set of steel wheels uh, with winter tires on, it's a quick swap. And yes, that's an excellent point about steel rims for your winter tires and swapping your tires over. You are eventually going to save the money and it's going to cost you less money. Uh, because with swapping tires over on rims uh, and then the cost of balancing, it's about $35 or $40 a tire. Whereas if you have steel rims, they're, I don't know, $400 for a set of four of them, brand new. You could even get a set of secondhand ones. Uh, and then, you know, as uh, M. Kronk said there, then it's a matter in the winter time when you're swapping over and putting your winter tires. It's just a matter of unbolting your summer your summer tires and then just bolting your winter tires on, and it's really inexpensive. I mean, even if you didn't uh, buy your tires at a tire shop, they only charge you thirty two bucks or something to unbolt and bolt the new ones on, right? Okay. Uh, Michael, thank you for doing these videos. You are most welcome, my friend. Mark, I've been driving for a good amount of time with a driving school as well as watching all of your videos. Do any of you guys have some small things to watch out for when driving on the road test? Thanks. Uh, Mark, space management is the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind when you're uh, doing your driver's test. Uh, space management, so stopping in traffic, uh, stop back so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. Uh, stopping left-hand turn, stop with the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line, wait for the gap, and then move into the intersection when the gap appears. Uh, two to three second following distance and as I say if you're not near anything or any other road users on the roadway You're not going to hit them. So stay away from other road users and manage space. Well Pathfinder 71. Yes, we're doing we're doing well with 70 people Pathfinder three two weeks ago two weeks ago We had hundred and twenty four people on the live stream. That was absolutely awesome Absolutely awesome. So, you know, it's it's doing really well uh, Kirsten, uh, my driving school has us in Honda Civics to learn and they feel really solid if that helps anyone. And yes, Kirsten, I would agree with you on in terms of the Honda Civics. They're really good as well. The Toyota Corollas are quite good. Uh, anything that's going to be front wheel drive is going to do well in the winter time. Anything that's all wheel drive, you know, the uh, WRX Subarus, uh, all of the Subarus are going to do well in the winter time. So they're going to be really great for you as well. Uh, you know, anything that's four wheel drive is going to have a heavy front end and they're going to do okay. Pickup trucks, not so much in the winter time because they have such a weight imbalance because of the, the bed at the back and the, you know, the heavy motor on the front. Uh, it makes them, if you touch the brakes on a pickup truck on a bit of ice and snow, it's really going <laughs> to, it's going to come around pretty quickly on you. AK, thanks for your lessons. If you are caught by an emergency vehicle near an intersection, where to stop? Okay, so AK, uh, usually your best option at an intersection in the, it, it, on a driver's test or any other time is simply to stay put, especially at an intersection. But if you think that you need to move or you need to get out of the way, then maybe a right-hand turn. Go around the corner and uh, you know just make sure you're checking in the mirror behind you that the emergency vehicle didn't follow you around the corner. But oftentimes, the, the best thing to do at an intersection is just stay stopped where you are because... The traffic on the other side of the intersection will stop and essentially what the ERT will come up and they'll just go out into the left-hand lane and go around you and through the intersection. M. Kronk, <laughs> wow. That is incredibly generous, my friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, I'm just blown away. A hundred bucks, thanks so much, man. That's, that's really awesome. And we're at 82 people on the live stream. Holy cow, that is awesome. Okay, uh, Mark, I'll definitely focus on that. I really appreciate what you do in your channel. You deserve all the best. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Lynn, I'm finding in my car it's more gas, quicker release of the clutch. Okay, yes, manual transmission. Sounds like, Lynn, you've got your clutch control down there and you're doing really well. Wow, <laughs> I'm still blown away by that. Uh, Super Chat. 
trying to remember what it was. They so rarely show up. <laughs> Not see. <laughs> just I'll leave that alone. Okay, Colin. So when you start to lift up on the clutch is when you add the gas. So Colin. Okay, holding the brake, holding the brake, bring the clutch out to the friction point. That's when the vehicle starts to move forward and you connect the engine with the drivetrain. As soon as you feel it start to move, release the brake, throttle up, bring the clutch out the rest of the way. That's the way you do it. Corey will put the video up for you on manual transmission and you can have a look at that. Okay, uh, channel SUV versus pickup truck uh, versus mini during an accident. Who is the most likely to survive? Uh, Actually, channel, uh, it's difficult, but who is it that does the crash testing? Just look up crash testing. You can do the reviews, uh, and they will give you a crash test rating for each one of the vehicles. So whatever vehicle you want to look at, have a look at that. 93 people on the live stream. Wow. <laughs> totally blown away. This is awesome. This is really awesome. Uh, thank you for helping me to drive safely, Katie. You're most most welcome. Maximilian, our Ford Explorer is good for winter. Uh, Maximilian, what I would suggest to you is Google it on, and have it do a search because there will be a forum and somebody on that forum will tell you if Ford Explorers are good winter vehicles. And I suspect you're going to do okay with a Ford Explorer because they are four-wheel drive. Uh, they are SUVs and they are fairly well balanced in terms of their weight. So you're going to do okay with those. Okay. Uh, Jacob, thank you. Bricks for wheels. Okay. Margaret, how often should I be taking the practice test? My learner's permit is at the end of the month. Uh, Margaret, uh, just as long as you're getting 80 or 90% consistently on your learner's test, uh, you should be all right for your learner's permit. And if you're getting 80 or 90% consistently, then what I would suggest to you is to just, you know, review. So like every day, maybe go in and just do one test and you're going to be all right. Okay. Uh, a pink. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking me. When do you put the gear uh, fifth to six? So is this, are we talking about a passenger vehicle with fifth to six gear? Uh, because six gear is going to be an overdrive gear, which essentially what it means is it's going to be a gear that you're going to use out on the highway. All right. Uh, Lynn, he's got a video with an exercise about finding the grabbing point. You got to feel it, but generally uh, two RPM. Yes. Okay. Yes, Lynn. So there's a video moving off. I just put it up two weeks ago and it'll show you how to do that. And you basically got to find the clutch control and the grabbing point, the biting point or the friction point, whatever it's called on the clutch before you get going there. Uh, dab, uh, do you shift into neutral at a stop sign? So we're talking about manual transmissions or automatic transmissions. Uh, dab, if you're going for a license test, no, you got to leave it in gear for the purposes of a license test. But after you get your license and you're driving manual transmission, then yes, you can put it into neutral, uh, when you're sitting at a light, but make sure that you're ready. And Corey, I'll put the video up for you on shifting faster. And that will show you how to do that and put it into neutral and whatnot. Okay, channel, what's your highest number during live chat? Uh, channel, my highest number was a couple of weeks ago. We got to 124 on a live stream, but uh, we're doing really well tonight, 91. That's really crazy. And a $100 live chat, our super chat, <laughs> which is just, oh, breaks. It's awesome. Uh, okay, Colin, uh, depends on how long you've been staying. Stop for Michael, Rick, I meant uh, Flowboy trailers. It's an eight axle asphalt trailer. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're talking something that you're running really heavy with, uh, Michael. Uh, and, okay, so, and asphalt trailer. So, Michael, those eight-axle flowboy trailers, are they also walking floors? Do they have walking floors on those, or are they augers? Uh, what is it on those? Uh, Tim, the one with the intact passenger compartment. Where did we go? There we go. Is the one you want to be in after the crash. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree with Tim. Uh, you definitely on that for sure. Okay. And again, coming back to what Tim was saying and what other people were asking in the questions, if, if you're concerned about your safety rating on your vehicle, and again, Volvo is the one that's got the top rating for safety ratings, uh, in terms of brand. So the other thing is, is that if you're concerned about that, when you're buying an automobile, go on, do the reviews, the crash test reviews, because all of these vehicles are now rated in terms of their crash test reviews. So have a look at those if that is something that you're concerned about when you're buying a vehicle. Okay. 
Okay, Tim, have a great night. Enjoy your supper, and we'll talk to you next week, my friend. Okay. All right. Uh, channel handbrake. Whenever you stop at a stop sign, red light. Uh, you can. Uh, they do that in Europe. That tends to be a European thing. It tends not to be something we do here in North America. North America, we just hold the clutch in and put our foot on the brake. Okay. Uh, Tim... So Tim, our Corey's put up the video on emergency vehicles, so have a look at that. Channel. Okay, there we go. Uh, Brad, for the purposes of a road test, what lane do you drive in on the highway? Do you stay in the right lane when entering the highway or move over a lane? No, uh, Brad, if you're on, if it's two lanes, you want to stay in the right-hand lane. If it's three lanes, you want then yes, you want to be in the center lane. The center lane is going to be your best lane to be driving in, okay? But remember, for the purposes of a driving test, you are going to be driving the posted speed limit, which is going to be floor, slower than the traffic flow, so you need to be over in the right-hand lane so you're not impeding traffic, okay? And this is a question that we come back to on left-hand turns. You have to move over to the right-hand lane immediately without being told by the driving examiner because uh, slower traffic stays right. Unless the driving examiner tells you that you're going to turn left in the next block or so, then you want to move over to the right-hand lane immediately, okay? Uh, okay, so Corey's put the video up for us on driving manual transmission. Uh, okay, Miranda, can you talk about the basic things driving on ice, please? Okay, so Miranda... When you're driving on ice and you get caught out, and Corey will put the video for you on stopping on ice, which <laughs> one morning a couple of years ago when I was taking the kids to school in the morning, I got caught out at an intersection. I come down, hit the brakes, and it was solid ice. So if that's what's happening and you need to come to a stop, okay, so it's, it's interesting how when you get caught out and you're in an emergency situation and you want to bring the vehicle to a stop, how you're kind of weighing your options in the instant of a second. And essentially what I was doing was I was at a roundabout, so I'm looking at the signs in the middle. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to hit the signs in the middle because that's going to be a fairly low impact crash as opposed to hitting another car. But then what happened was is as I was moving to the left, because there was a median in the middle, I got out of the tracks of the other vehicles and got into the shoulder and once I got into the shoulder there it, there wasn't the ice there and I came to a stop so and so the other point about this is is that snow and ice okay uh, snow and ice is most slippery when the temperature is near freezing when it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or when it's zero degrees Celsius and the reason for that is think of it like an ice hockey rink the ice is most slippery after the Zamboni comes out and floods the ice because you have a layer of water on top of the ice. It's the same thing with compact snow at intersections. What happens is cars come up, they hit the brakes and they slide, they compact the snow and then they put pressure on it and it creates a layer of water on top. So usually in the winter time, snow and ice is going to be most slippery at intersections when the temperature is around freezing. So be careful there and again, employ the technique that you want to slow down back from where you actually want to stop and then you creep up to where you want to stop in the winter time but again and if you start to lose control in the on snow and ice then get your foot off the brake get your foot off the throttle and look out the front windshield steer the vehicle and look in the direction that you want to go so that you don't end up in the ditch okay because overuse of the primary controls, too much throttle, too much brake, too much steering is what's gonna cause you to potentially lose control. So get off those and focus on your steering. And again, chop steering. So you, if, you're, if you wanna go to the left, a little bit like this. So bring it down, bring it back. And that's a racing technique and that will allow the front tires to get some traction and allow you to maintain control of the vehicle. Okay, all right. Any survival tips? So, uh, channel just went through that. Uh, when did you start to learn? Okay, thanks, Ben. Got that. All right. Gordon, last year I went through a red light because I was going down a hill and did not appear to be icy. I was scary experience, can't assure anything. Yes. <laughs> and Gordon, uh, that's exactly what happened. Corey will put the video up for us on stopping on ice, and that's exactly what happened to me. Come down the hill. 
hit the brakes at the intersection and it was icy and you know i'm just trying to figure out how to get the vehicle stopped and that's what's going to happen you're going to get caught out at intersections especially when the temperature is around zero freezing so when you come down you want to slow down back from where you actually want to stop and then creep up and then that way you're not going to get caught out when you get to the intersection and find out that it's just a, a skating rink and you're going to go through the intersection but we're happy to hear that there wasn't a crash and everything it was just a you know on the nail biter on the edge of your seat there okay excellent miranda thank you very much you're most welcome uh ashwani in residential area of vancouver where cars are parked on both sides what speed should we go uh 50 kilometers an hour per rule in city or around 30 or 40. uh probably around 30 or 40 ashwani corey will put the video up for you on pass the driver's test and if you look at that you'll notice that I'm driving in residential areas with cars on both sides of the road as well and I'm not doing 50 kilometers an hour. You can't do 50 kilometers an hour because there's just too much potential for problems in the winter time and those types of things. So, you know, you obviously you want to go a little bit slower, okay, in residential areas. Okay, uh, Katie, you have winter phobia. <laughs> so one of the things I might suggest if Katie and other people or you're having some trepidation about driving in the winter time, uh, maybe just go out with somebody who has some experience who can you know offer some suggestions and some feedback while you're driving in the winter time but the biggest the biggest thing I see in the winter time with other people who are driving uh, a they're being too aggressive on the steering wheel and they're you know they're getting the vehicle out of line because what happens is, is that the reason that you lose control of your vehicle is, is because a you're going too fast and B you start to take it out of that straight line. Once the vehicle gets out of that straight line, inertia is going to kick it around and you're going to start to lose control. Okay. So automatic transmissions, Ben is talking about an automatic transmission in winter time. The other thing that you can do in the winter time is with an automatic transmission, there's always some residual power being transmitted to the drivetrain in an, in an automatic transmission. So what you can do when you come up to stop to assist braking in the winter time in an automatic vehicle is simply push the gear selector into neutral. If you push the gear selector into neutral, that disconnects the, the engine from the drivetrain and now it's all braking, okay? And the other thing that I will say to manual car drivers, and I, I have people, I've had people say this to me, oh, they gear down in the winter time. You're just asking to get yourself into trouble because you don't know how much braking force you're putting to the back wheels. Simply push in the clutch and use the brake to stop that vehicle because wh why would you use a $15,000 drivetrain to slow, slow the vehicle when you have $400 brakes, okay? Don't use, just use the brakes. You're gonna have far more control uh, than you will by gearing down. Okay, uh, Tim, winter tires. I personally recommend Michelin X Ice, and I'm not getting paid by Michelin, but I really, really like Michelin tires. Uh, I've put a different brand of tires on my vehicle because Michelin stopped making the tires for my CRV, and I don't like them as much. Okay, they're they're okay, but they're not Michelins. I just I really like Michelins, and I'm waiting to put my Michelin X Ice back on my car. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. You you know, and if you can't afford snow tires and a set of all season tires for your vehicle, all weather tires, all weather. So there's all season and all weather. All season or summer tires, all weather tires will get you through the winter. And if you're not doing a lot of driving out on the highway and those types of things, then all weather tires, a good set of Michelin all weather tires, uh, will work out for you. Okay. Uh, they'll have the, either the M&S on them, which stands for mud and snow, or they'll have the uh, mountain with the snowflake symbol in them. So that's what you want for winter tires on your vehicle. Okay, uh, Pathfinder, going to work. Thank you again, Rick, uh, Corey, and Corey, God bless you. Thank you so much, Pathfinder. All the best. God bless. All right, have a good night at work there. Uh, ben, I've got 40 hours of daytime and three nights of driving myself. That's awesome. Okay, excellent. Uh, Lynn, Rick, and nothing like experience to cure lack of experience, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And the other thing, just to add on to that, Lynn, nothing succeeds like success. So, right, so that we do a little bit. And the other thing about learning, right, is, is you, you, 
it's it's like eating an elephant. You can't eat the whole elephant in one sitting, right? You gotta you know eat the elephant one piece at a time. So it's the same thing with learning how to drive, learning how to drive at night, learning how to drive in the rain, learning how to drive in the winter time, a little bit at a time and a little bit more and a little bit more, and you're going to build your successes and nothing succeeds like success, okay? So, uh, so Tim says that he likes Bridgestone, so that's another option in terms of tires that you could use. And again, remember that anything that you buy for your car, any parts, any brand, all of this stuff is reviewed on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of forums on the internet, so make sure that you Google this stuff as well. Uh, one other thing <laughs> that I'm gonna do a video on that I really like, uh, a year ago, my brother, who's a mechanic, he's an automotive technician, they're not mechanics anymore, he would just smack me with a stick if he heard me saying that, automotive technician uh, was k and filters. These are recyclable air filters that go in your car. And so I bought one, I put it in, they're a little bit pricey. They're not cheap, that's for sure, when you think that an air filter is 15 bucks and a k and air filter, a recyclable air filter is about 90 bucks. Uh, put it in. Uh, I cleaned it the other last week and simply you just dunk it in some soap and water, put the cleaner on, there's a kit that, come, that you have to buy and uh, let it dry overnight and, and then respray it with oil. I really like the oil part because it really collects the dust particles instead of letting them go into your uh, engine and put it back in and I'll tell you, I can actually tell the difference in the motor, the way the motor runs on my car with the K&N uh, air filter because it also allows more air into the motor so this might be something you know for those of you looking for environmental options for less throwing stuff less stuff into the into the uh, rubbish and those types of things this is another option that you could definitely uh, consider as a k and air filter m cronk uh good stream thank you so much my friend what to do in a blizzard if on the road uh alum uh if you're in a blizzard you might want to try and find the safest place you can to get off the road and wait out the storm, okay? Uh, and uh, <laughs> last week when I went down to Vancouver Island, I went over the connector, which is between Kelowna and Merritt, British Columbia. There was probably 12 inches of snow on the road, but again, the buggy is just a crazy uh, winter vehicle and I was going and, uh, you know, had the dash cam on, but uh, didn't get the, the chip out and I overwrote writ all of that, so I don't have any... <laughs> <laughs> of that uh, footage, unfortunately. So it's it's a it's a fishing tale of driving in that snow. Uh, Beaver Jiu Jitsu was awesome last week. I uh, got in a couple of times last week before I went down to Vancouver, uh, back down to Vancouver Island. But uh, good couple of good uh, rolls last week. So yeah, Jiu Jitsu was awesome. Uh, Alam, uh, new driver practicing driving. Yes, uh, you want to start with. The uh, exercises for beginners, Corey will put that video up for you and that will teach you where your vehicle is in space and place and it will teach you mastery of the primary control. And if you can do those beginning exercises, it'll really build your confidence before you head out into traffic and start playing in crowds, you know, with other traffic and those types of things. Uh, Lynn, I'm going to head back to the manual playlist. I will sleep on the decision then choose tomorrow. Uh, is the <laughs> Every fight I've ever seen ends up on the ground. Uh, yes, it does, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to have that jujitsu in your in your belts. But I will say to you, uh, don't underestimate striking either, because I've I've seen a lot of knockouts in my time. Epic, uh, really good stream, Rick. And for snowy and wintry mixed conditions, will driving on the middle lane highest point on the road work out or not? Because some uh, state manuals do not address winter driving. Yeah, that's that's just crazy, Epic. That some uh, manuals don't. Uh, Epic, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'll say this about winter driving. Again, I come back to the connector and this isn't just the connector, this is gonna be a lot of places. It's just gonna be a single track. Uh, because you have to realize that in blizzard conditions, and this is the other point that I hadn't made yet, that the farther you get from major roads, the less plowed the roads are gonna be because winter maintenance crews are going to work on the major roads first. So if you're out on the major highways and those types of things, they're going to be salted, they're going to be sanded because that's where winter maintenance crews are going to focus their attention. Getting into the residential streets and those types of things. Six years ago, we got 36 inches of snow here in 24 hours in Vernon. It, it, it went into the spring and they still hadn't plowed some of the residential streets here in Vernon. It was only the main streets that got the attention. 
And the other thing is, is that a lot of these big cities, you know, Vernon and other places, they've gotten rid of all of their snow equipment. I mean, basically, they got a few skid steers. Uh, you know, that's what they've got for moving snow. And they will not move heavy amounts of snow. It's just, they just don't. So they don't have these big machinery that will move large amounts of snow anymore. Uh, so that's another reason why temperature, uh, why uh, roadways don't get cleared. Uh... Tim, what temperatures do you have in the winter? Uh, Tim, temperatures can range from... Where do you live, Tim? Uh, just talk about where you live in terms of uh, temperatures in the wintertime and whatnot. Uh, Michael, one more time. Flowboy trailers are a live bottom system. Uh, it's, a, it's a belt on the bottom that pushes out the asphalt onto the paver. Okay, so uh, Michael, so the flowboys are a little bit like walking floors, but it's more of a belt. Uh, and again, Michael... Any trailer that's going to be heavy and uh, asphalt trailers, uh, I personally would find it a little unnerving driving an asphalt trailer. And I'll tell you why. Uh, when I worked in Ottawa in the late 1990s, there was an asphalt hauling company below us downstairs. One of their drivers went around a corner too fast, dropped the trailer over. The front of the trailer blew open and filled the cab up with hot asphalt and that driver survived for two years two not two years two weeks in intensive care before he died and it was just it was just an awful story so hauling asphalt hot asphalt ooh. <laughs> it's probably one of the only types of equipment that i probably would not work in just because of that story and because i remember that because i was there and it was just it was really awful Okay, uh, Cole, see you next week. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Tim, you live in Moscow. <laughs> it's going to be very cold in Moscow. So, Tim, it's going to be a little bit easier driving in sub-zero temperatures, but just know that when the temperature is around freezing, zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when, it, when roadways are going to be most slippery uh, in snow and ice. Okay? Uh, Gordon, uh, winter maintenance crews do not come external service providers. That is perhaps why the roadways don't get cleared on time. Uh, yeah, it is outsourced for sure, Gordon. But for the most part, you know, they're going to focus their immediate attention when it first snows uh, on the major roadways and highways and whatnot. Uh, ben, how far should I stay back from a semi and other work truck trailers on the freeway? Uh, probably three to four seconds, Ben, is, is a good distance behind a tractor trailer on the highway for sure. Okay, Colin, I can tell a major difference uh, with my winter tires. Mind you, the summer tires I have as well will be made of PVC Ironman tires are crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the other thing, Colin, is, is that winter tires are a softer rubber compound. This is the other reason you don't want to run them in the summertime because you're just going to wear them out so quickly because it's a softer rubber and as they heat up, they're going to deteriorate faster. That's why you don't want to leave your summer tires. And it just, I cringe in the, <laughs> when I'm walking around here in the good good weather and you hear the car go down the road and it's still got its steel studded winter tires on it. So you want to get them off as soon as the weather clears up in the spring. And actually by i think it's march 31st here in british columbia you legally have to have your steel studded tires off your vehicle uh mark also my de my dealership suggested that winter tires are not that needed okay so uh what about all season tires though okay so mark uh not all season tires because all season tires are summer tires mark what you want is all weather tires so there's a difference between all season and all weather tires. All weather tires are good for the winter time and they will have either M and S on them, which is mud and snow, or they will have the mountain symbol with the snowflake in it. And those will work through the winter time for you. And actually a friend of mine, I just put uh, those on the 2018 Volkswagen uh, that she has. Uh, she couldn't afford snow tires this year. So we just put uh, Michelin all weather tires on her vehicle so that's another option uh, if you can't afford uh, to purchase uh, specifically winter tires for your vehicle at this juncture okay david is it legal to pull other trucks with tow straps uh it's yeah there's not nothing saying that you can't pull another vehicle with a tow strap uh you might <laughs> you might want to look uh david before you go ahead and do that 
look up some videos on towing fails here on the on YouTube because there's some pretty funny <laughs> towing fails for sure, okay? So make sure you know where to hook the tow strap on. And usually the best place to hook the tow strap on is on a tow hitch. If you have if there's a tow hitch on the vehicle, hook the tow strap to the tow hitch because it's bolted to the frame. Otherwise, make sure you get it on to the towing point on the vehicle. And is another that's an excellent point. Uh, know that a lot of cars now will have a little plastic pop out on the front and the back. And if you go into the jack assembly in the vehicle, there will be a hook in there that you screw into there. And that's what you pull on when you tow the vehicle is that hook. Okay, so before you just run out and say to somebody, oh, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to tow your vehicle. <laughs> and you pull the front of the vehicle off or something goofy like that, uh, make sure that you look and you figure out where to hook the tow strap so that you don't pull the poor person's car apart, okay? Because <laughs> it happens and it's funny and it makes good YouTube videos. So, and if you're unsure about where to hook the tow strap on, uh, have, a, have, have a look in the owner's manual for the towing points on the vehicle, okay? So yeah, be helpful. Make sure you're just not pulling the person's car car apart okay uh, okay uh, excellent what's very important to keep in mind in snow and winter okay so keeping drive to the conditions of the roadway in snow and ice in the winter time uh, make sure that you're deft steering off the throttle off the brake if you begin to lose control of the vehicle uh, okay so excellent point flaming hawk how do I know I'm in the center of the lane when it's snowing so the way that you know is you're looking farther down the road, look at the landmarks along the side of the road. The other thing that I would suggest to you is to have a look at the night driving video. All of the tips and techniques in the night driving video will help you to drive in at adverse weather conditions. Also look at the deep snow driving videos and the playlist on winter driving. All of that will help you out. Uh, David, I've towed semi trucks out with my truck, done it for years. But yes, it had a few fails due to shot frames. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, excellent. Okay. Uh, excellent. Okay, so we answered that question. Yeah, don't you don't need to ask me the same question three times. I've got it. Okay. Excellent. Uh, how do I... Okay, we've answered that question. Uh, Gordon, autonomous cars on icy roads. Oh, dear. Yeah, we could we could talk about that for quite a while. Uh, Ashwani in Vancouver, what would you suggest for December, March, winter, all weather tires? Uh, Ashwani, I think in Vancouver, you would do fine with all weather tires. That would get you through there just fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> the man, this man knows a lot about tires. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've done a video with, with, uh, with Gary and I've talked to Gary quite a bit about tires and whatnot. Uh, Okay, there we go. Excellent. All right, so I think we're going to wrap up for tonight. Thank you so much for an awesome, awesome live stream. Okay, uh, what would you suggest? Okay, we talked about all of that. Excellent. So if you have any questions and I didn't answer your question, or I didn't get to it. It was busy tonight. We had 90 people at one point here on the live stream. Uh, super chat. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you for that again. <laughs> that just really blows me away. Uh, and really great live stream. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com, and we'll definitely help you out. And uh, what do you carry during winter driving? Uh, David, there's a video here in the winter, uh, winter driving playlist, and it'll show you what you need in your, uh, in your survival kit there. Okay? Thank you, everybody, for a great live stream. Uh, <laughs> darn. Have a great night. Uh, you too, Jake. All the best. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay? Have a good night. Bye now. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Talk soon. Bye now.